All right, everybody, let's go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. Look at that. Look at it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I started growing my quarantine beard in late February and really had a beard all the way up until the end of June right now as I'm recording this. So I finally shaved it and it looks like I'm wearing makeup. Like I look, I look silly. So over the last few years, this room, my Harry Potter room, has become a bit of a vlog staple. I do a lot of stuff in here. I do a lot of filming in here. People who watch my videos regularly, you, you see this Harry Potter room frequently. I've gotten a lot of requests over the years and really a lot of requests lately to do kind of like a tour explanation just to talk about the evolution of this room. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna give you a tour of my Harry Potter Funko Pop room. I mean, it's not all Funko Pops, but it's it's mostly Funko Pops. Throughout this room decorated on the walls is 183 Harry Potter Funko Pops. We've been collecting Harry Potter Funko Pops for about three years now. The collection started when Allie was decorating her classroom in a Harry Potter theme where she was separating the kids into Hogwarts houses and there was a Hogwarts castle on the wall and just she wanted to create an environment for her classroom that was fun for her students. So I bought a handful of Harry Potter Funko Pops, the first Funko Pops that I've ever bought. And the very first one that I ever bought was this one right here. That's Harry holding the sword of Gryffindor. After I got that one, I got the remainders of the set of the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That's the second book and the second movie. You've got Dobby with the sock. That's when you get freed. Ginny Weasley holding the book. So these are all displayed in a very specific order. We kind of change the order up every once in a while, but they're in certain places for very specific reasons. So it started as just simple classroom decorations. And then after that year, Allie and I decided to put them up in our own house and it slowly grew from there. For a while, Allie and I enjoyed just going to the store and picking a new Funko Pop up once every few weeks or once every few months, just kind of casually. It wasn't anything serious. And then one of our friends got us a $500 gift card to one of those super nerd stores. One of those stores where you can really only buy video game stuff or Funko Pops or just, just silly, you know, pop cultural trinkets. We decided, all right, we're, we're going all in. We're gonna take this real serious. We spent all of the gift card money on about 40 more Funko Pops, which brought us up to just under 100. And then at that point, we were like, well, we've got about half of all of the currently existing Funko Pops. Should we just slowly try to grow our collection, get them all. Allie and I discussed this and we realized that Harry Potter was important enough and we loved these things enough that yeah, we were, we were just gonna keep collecting. And now we have all the Harry Potter Funko Pops. Well, at least all the ones that are out, believe it or not, there are still new ones, new lines coming out. We've got about four or five on pre-order. I debated whether or not I should share this, but this is the question everyone's gonna ask. How much money have you spent on this? There's about... $3,000 worth of Funko Pops in this room. Yeah, about about three grand worth. I should point out that does include the Fantastic Beast Pops as well. All of these and all of those are Fantastic Beast Pops. Like, we've got like five different versions of Newt Scamander and quite a few different versions of Grindelwald as well. Now, most Funko Pops cost about $10 and most of these in this room range from $10 to $20. However, there are some major exceptions in the Funko Pop world and particularly in some of these Harry Potter lines. I know what you're looking at, looking at this, but we're focusing on these. Like, Azkaban Beelatrix. This is Beelatrix Lestrange from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I think she was like 80 bucks when we got her. Um, you've got Hermione as cat. Some of the more rarer Funko Pops. Remember when she took the Polygus potion and turned into a cat on accident? Look at my face. <laughs> Look at your tail. Allie's favorite character in all of the Harry Potter universe is Luna Lovegood, mostly because she's weird and quirky and kind of makes her laugh. But this is her all time favorite pop. This is the 2016 Comic Con exclusive 
the Luna Lovegood glasses exclusive. This little girl was just a little under 300 bucks. And then you've got Lionhead Luna, which is also equally as adorable, but you know, she was like 20 bucks. One of my absolute favorite pops is Death Eater Lucius. That's Lucius Malfoy as a Death Eater with his super cool mask. He was hard to find. There's not a whole lot of this guy. I think he was like about $90. $90. I'm pretty sure Bogart Snape was pretty expensive as well, but remember in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban when Neville's greatest fear was Snape, and so the Bogart turned into Snape, and then he envisioned, envisioned it with his grandma's clothing on? I like Funko Pops like everybody else because they're cute and adorable, and they're pretty relatively inexpensive. Like, yes, there's thousands of dollars worth of Pops on this wall, but like I said, most of them are about $10. And for being at a low price point, they pay really close attention to detail. Like this guy right here. Here's Professor Quirrell from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And like I said about details, when you take his little head garmish off, his little turban off, there's Voldemort's face on the back, like, right? Like, they, they do cool stuff, look at that. There are more plush pops, and what I mean by that is some of them are soft, like this, we have a few different Hedwigs, but this Hedwig, I don't know if you can see it, but it's incredibly soft, like really fuzzy and soft. Up here, you've got the ghosts, you remember the ghosts, of course. You've got the Bloody Baron, Nearly Headless Nick, and of course, Moaning Myrtle. And those guys actually glow in the dark, too, so very ghost-like. Most of these pops are organized by movie, like this set right here, this is Harry Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. You've got Harry right here holding the golden egg from the tournament. Of course, in the Goblet of Fire, all of the characters go to the Yuletide Ball, they get all dressed up. So you've got Harry and Ron in his robes, Ron in his like really silly robes, Dumbledore in his dress robes, Hermione looking super cute in a pink dress. Like I said, pretty much this whole wall is Fantastic Beast Pops. And I actually love the pops more than the movies because I love the creatures. We've got several different Nifflers, probably like six or seven different kind of Nifflers that just, I mean, that's just like one of the cutest things you've ever seen. 100% one of our most prized pops is Akami. Akami, if you saw the Fantastic Beast movie, you know what she is. But this pop was very difficult to get, very difficult to find. There weren't very many of them made and I think the most expensive pop in here. We got her from some special vendor. At the time, I think she was going for like $300. You've got Professor McGonagall, and obviously cat version because she's an animingus, which means she can transform herself into an animal. You've got Professor Lupin, and then Werewolf Lupin because, you know, he is a werewolf. Obviously, we have some wands as well. We have Dumbledore's, well, it's not technically Dumbledore's. We have the Elder Wand, the most powerful wand ever made, one of the Deathly Hallows, accompanied by Voldemort, Mort's wand. I mean, that is just, look at how mean and menacing that thing looks. Here's one of my newest wands. It's Grindelwald's wand, the dark wizard. Pretty awesome. I would love to collect the wands and have like a big display case. Maybe someday, whenever we move out of this house, get a bigger place, expand, which we'll do eventually. Maybe I'll start collecting the wands. But the crazy thing is when you go to Universal Studios, there are so many of them. And like, like I walk in there and I'm like a kid in the candy store. I just want to buy everything. Like everything I see, I'm just like, ha ha. So yeah. Funko Pops does this new series called Movie Moments, special movie moments. So they're like bigger, more extravagant pop pieces. Over here, we've got Ron writing the chess piece from the very first Harry Potter. You know, when he wins the chess game to help Harry advance to get to the Sorcerer's Stone. Here, Harry is trying to push his cart through the platform nine and three quarters from the Chamber of Secrets. And then over here is Hagrid's hut. That's one of the newer ones. Up there in the corner, we have all three of the characters riding their brooms playing Quidditch. Back here, we've got several different sets of books. Allie is currently collecting all of the new pictured books. Yes, the Harry Potter books are coming in big picture books now. Accompanied by my original Harry Potter book set. See, some of these books are pretty worn and torn. Like, my dog way back in the day got a hold of this and kind of ripped it up, but that's my original set. These are the books that I literally waited in line for at stores to get as they came out. A lot of people don't understand why I have such a love and such a passion for the Harry Potter series, and it's, it's for a variety of reasons. I grew up with it. Actually, I'm basically the same age as Harry in the books. I'll never forget my mom taking me to see the very first Harry Potter movie at the Suncoast Resort and Casino in Las Vegas in November of 2001. I was nine years old. We waited in line to get seats, and I remember coming out of that movie, I was like, I, I loved it, I thought it was so good, and I had such a great time, and my mom asked me, she's like, do you wanna read the books? 
And I was like, books, there's books. So we bought the books and started reading them and then kind of the rest was history. You know, the final book came out in the summer of 2007. I was 15 years old, it was July. And at that point in my life, I was dealing with a lot. You know, I was dealing with my, my questionable future. I was dealing with an alcoholic father. I was dealing with my parents getting divorced. You know, I tell you those things because I buried myself in these books to kind of escape my own reality, to have some sense of joy and wonderment and, and honestly magic during a time when I was sad or struggling or, you know, didn't know what to do with myself. Those kinds of things are important. You know, having an escape, having a happy place, having something that puts your mind at ease, whatever it is. For me, it was Harry Potter and other things as well. Those things matter. Being a super fan and being a part of a community is a fun thing. Like I consider myself a part of obviously the Harry Potter fan community, but the swimming community, the movie fandom community, you know, being a fan, like there's, there's power in that. There's power in knowing that other people feel the same way that you feel, that feel joy and get love and emotion out of the things that you hold dearly. Like those things are great. Most days throughout the year, I wake up at 5 a.m. and I leave my house before 5.30 to get to the pool. And I climb out of bed, I leave my bedroom, I walk over here and I open this door and I turn the lights on. And this room, the things that are on this wall, all of these pops, all this Harry Potter stuff, is the first thing that I see every day when I wake up. It's the very first thing in the first room that I walk into and I start my day with. And that brings me joy. And then on top of that, the very first thing that Allie and I ever talked about, the very first real conversation I ever had with my wife was about Lord of the Rings. The new Hobbit movies were coming out and we were discussing them and both, funny thing, both her and I went to those movies by ourselves and then we talked about it. And then that kind of spiraled into other nerd stuff which led us to Harry Potter and we both realized that we both love Harry Potter and that was one of the first real bonding things for us and then this franchise and this this wizarding world has played a big role in my life and it brings me a great deal of joy as I have just expressed to you. And my hope is that, you know, by me making this video and explaining it to people, I'm not saying you need to be the biggest Harry Potter fan or you need to go watch all the movies or read the books. What I want people to understand, like me, is that oftentimes when you see someone who is a super fan that is this passionate about something, it's oftentimes for reasons that are much more than what you just see at the surface level. Does that make sense? And now I feel like a wizard. That's it for me guys. As always, make sure you're following me on social media at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Vlogs every Wednesdays and sometimes other days of the week as well. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my videos with your friends. That really helps me. We have merch. Merch is available at the merch store. Check that stuff out. And until my next video, I will see you guys later. Ooh. Ooh.